G'day, this is Shay, and welcome back to the Turing Test. This is really exciting. We're, we're exploring the crew quarters and we're learning about each of the crew, each of the members of the crew, and finding out who they are and what they do. And we've been to see Sarah and Chris, but Daniel McLean's door is not able to be opened. And I was curious what might be in there because we've seen through the other um, crew members' bedrooms. What could we possibly see through here that might be of interest? We can see his certificate just there and his bed, but nothing else. Can we see anything? No. Oh. Okay, well that's why. <laughs> that's why we can't get through there. Tom probably won't let us in there because we might find out things we might not need, we probably shouldn't know. So next we're going to go into Suichi's place. Ooh. Ooh. This is cool. Who's this? Oh, is that his wife? She's gorgeous. <gasps> Wedding ring. Oh, did it say something? What was in the in the information about him? Did it say that his wife had passed away? What's this? Oh, something to read. We'll come back to that in a second. It's a flask of some kind. Oh, look, a bonsai tree. And hmm, you might have completed it and then mixed it up again. Oh, now why isn't the Tom thing here? Remember the other other crew members had the Tom thing there? Can we open this? Ooh. Ooh, I wonder if the other other t other crew members had that. Probably not. Oh, now I can't close it. Um, <gasps> there's Earth from the moon, or I think it's from the moon. He's got some of these as well. Little is your. What are that for? <gasps> A violin. Beautiful. Can I play it? I want to play the violin. I've never played the violin before. What's this? Motion sickness relief. <laughs> oh, you can't go to space with motion sickness. That's terrible. <laughs> okay, another Rubik's Cube. Goodness. What's this? Something to read. And a watch. He's not got his watch on. So I can't do anything with those. Let's have a look. Whoa. Whoa. What was that? Oh no, what do they do? Okay. Aww. He's adorable. What's underneath these covers? I want to know. What's up there? Is it going to get into there? No. Okay. So, that actually made a noise. What does it mean? Did it open this? No. What did it do? I don't know. Maybe you maybe you guys saw it? I don't know. Okay. So to Matthew Layton at ISA. Organism 119 sequence. We've finished sequencing it. Data Oh Oh my goodness. Okay. Data attached. It is a virus unlike any we have ever seen. Maybe we have found a cure for senescence. A form of biological Im 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 immortality. We are running some long-term tests on plants and mice to see the effects. Do they have plants and mice? I guess they do. The plants are clearly exhibiting longer lifespans when exposed to the organism. We don't have the facilities here to continue testing. We're going on to human testing. We're going to use ourselves as subjects. It's the only way to accelerate progress. End of correspondence. Unknown Europa virus. Gel electrophoresis images. Wow. Okay, so I wonder if Tom knows that they put the organism inside them. It's a microscopic image of it. Very fascinating. Okay, I'm gonna try and go up to the top and just leave it. If you want to pause the video right here and read it, then go ahead and then we'll move on.
And now we'll move on to the other one. This one? Very interesting. So they've found an organism which could potentially change human life itself. That's pretty awesome. Okay, let's move on. Mikhail Tokarev. Oh, his room is very different. He's covered the Tom thing up with this. Which is... Looks like medical things. And there's a painting. Is there anything on the back? No. So he's an artist of some kind as well. Oh, what's this? Unnamed syringe. Paints, I think those are. Possibly. <laughs> Don't mix paints with medicines. Well, it's pink, yellow, pink, white, maybe. Mm -hmm. I can't do anything with the paper. What's over here? He also has the Rillazole and that's a paintbrush with pink on it. And more paint. It would suck if he'd run out of paint. You know what I mean? What's this? Oh, is it his dog? So cute. Uh, oh, we'll go come to that in a second. That's He's a doctor. Yes, he is. Bandages and stuff. It looks like he might have they might have left kind of suddenly. Or maybe he was quickly trying to heal somebody or something. Oh what's this? A voice recorder. Why can't I listen to this? I really want to listen to it. Was this a thing? When I was standing over here it looked like I could Oh no, it's just the light shining on there. Okay, uh something to read. March 6th, 2249. The whole team experienced nausea during a large electrical surge in Europa's atmosphere. I am concerned this was not an instance of mass hysteria. Vital signs were affected. It caused a uniform surge in heart rate that was detected in all members of the crew. I am reporting to the ISA. March 27th, oh, March 7th, 2249. I reported the nausea, nauseous incident to ISA. They offered an explanation of electrical disturbance to our central nervous system. This is ludicrous. An electrical surge large enough to affect our nervous system would have done more than make the team feel, feel ill. I'm going to experiment with some shock therapy. March 8th. I've discovered that electronic fields disturb our telemetry implants in a way I didn't expect. I have contacted the ISA. Strangely, Tom was not comfortable with my attempts to disturb the implant. The ISA, March 9th. The ISA have reported back informing me that I do not informing me, me that I am not to disturb the implants. They have also encouraged me not to discuss this further with the team. I'm continuing to investigate. What does that mean? That little thing there, that word. March 11th. I have been running some experiments outside of Tom's view. I can tell he knows this. He has been acting different, differently around me, like an offended child, which, is, which would explain that audio that we heard when we first started the game. I feel increasingly nauseous. These implants seem to have natural neural connectivity. Out-of-body experiences are more frequent now. March 16th. I have established a definite correlation. Against my knowledge, I have been implanted with a device that affects my mind. I use my opportunities in regular health checkups to investigate the crew. We all have them. Every single one of us is implanted with some mind-altering contraption. Tom has been encouraging the team to worry about my men mental health. He requested that I retire away from the crew misinformation. March 26. I cannot will myself to investigate this further. I grow tired quickly. I cannot think straight. I am not sure if the implant is affecting my thoughts anymore. I believe it is trying to subdue my mind. I think I'm going to attempt an exc excision. I'm going to remove this implant. April 4th. I'm typing with my left hand now. The excision went wrong. I successfully removed the implant. Unfortunately, I lost my hand in the operation. Tom is very angry. The crew refused to talk to me. Apparently, I'm a bad influence. Sarah patched me up. I wonder if the nature of the... April 5th. I wonder if the nature of the organism and its disturbance of my DNA has caused my awakening... 
from Tom's influence, if so that would make for a worrisome revelation. Perhaps his organism is not so friendly. Dan informed me, April 6th, Dan informed me that the ISA have called for my termination. My masochistic experiment proves I am danger to the mission. Fortunately he chose not to lock me in the brig. I'm going to investigate this implant further. I have to hide my work. The, tear become, the team are becoming increasingly aggressive. They seem to oppose my work to understand the implant. It does not help that Tom is encouraging them to just trust me. April 7th. <clears throat> I have discovered the nature of the implant. It is a complex computer. It interfaces with the human mind directly. It seems to condition the mind through pal Pavlovian and instrumental conditioning. Eliciting feelings of euphoria when the wearer is obedient and dysphoria when they are disobedient. It also has the effect of suppressing impulses in the frontal lobe, presumably to lower free will. It seems to interface crudely with motor neuron cells throughout the cere cerebellum. Cerebr that word. It is my hypothesis that the crow is controlled by this implant. That is their strong aversion to helping me. I need a method of suppressing its impact. Perhaps a drug? Rilazol, maybe an antidepressant to minimise the conditioning effects. Combined with a strong electromagnetic field, I could use one of the industrial electromagnets from the construction robots. April 8th. I have managed to get Chris on my side. He's agreed to test some medical procedures with me in private. It will be more difficult one-handed, but I must persevere. I'm hoping to keep this out of the eyes of Tom, though I have a feeling he will still be listening. Interesting. Okay, so Chris doesn't actually have one of those little, little computers or tablets on his in his room. The ones with all the information on, like Mikhail and Sarah and Suichi do. But he has also papers lying on the floor, which we can't read. Okay, are we ready to go on to the next level? Let's go. What's going to happen? I'm nervous. Does Tom know where we are? Does he... Hmm. I wonder if... I wonder if Ava has one of those mechanisms in her mind. This is such an amazing game. I can't wait to see what happens. Here we are. One. Oh no, we're on 21. Level 21. These people should not have been sent here. It's not safe. Manned space travel is not safe. Since mankind first entered space, the debate has raged over the value of manned space travel. There is a large contingent of the ISA that believes all tasks that need to be performed on Europa could be performed by machines. It is obviously less risky to send machines rather than humans into space. <laughs> okay, so we can only have one. You can't have two. Let's put that down there. Um, hopefully we can walk across here. Yes, we can. We're probably going to need that, so I'm going to take it. Um, yeah. This door doesn't open, though. That opens that door, but not that one. That's kind of weird. Let's go like this again and just come back across here and see that one there. So. Why doesn't this one work? Okay. Hmm, so I can't, I, no matter what I do, I can't get across here unless I put that in there. But that's also needed to open that. Okay, we can't do that yet. What we need to do is get across. So, <laughs> we're going to do this, but I've missed something. What have I missed in getting through here? Oh. Oh. Okay. I kind of get it now. Wait, can I get that? I can get that. 
Okay, so that's there. That opens that door. But if, hang on. If I pick this up, then that opens that one. Uh, how can I? Oh my goodness. Okay, what? So if I go through here. opens that one but that's not the one that I want to open I want to open that one to open this door I know that the answer is so obvious right now when I've been looking back at my previous episodes it's been like duh just do that we need two players this is what this is So in order to get that one to open, wait, so this opens that one. Oh, okay, 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 I've got an idea. Oh, uh, whoops, no, wait, wait, hang on a second, ah, okay, put this down, put this in there, pick this up, and we're gonna put that here, so we can go through here, and then we can pick this up, and open this, <gasps> we did it, wow, I'm so happy, that was so good, so good, so good, Level, still level 21? Is that right? No, level 22. We sent drones to Earth's moon. Scientists can remotely operate drones. If we did it there, why not here too? Teleoperation became possible on the moon when the communication latency was reduced to 1.4 seconds. The distance between the Earth and Earth's moon is approximately 1.3 light seconds. This enables near real-time control of drones by scientists. Oh. The story is different with Europa. As the distance between Earth and Jupiter oscillates between approximately 32 and 53 light minutes, it takes a very long time for Earth to communicate with Europa. Due to that distance, teleoperation will never be possible on Europa. Okay, but why not control drones from the satellite? Why not indeed? My systems can be teleoperated from Europa's satellite. That is when the communication lines are opened. However, the advantages of human field workers, apparently, outweigh the risks. Whew, okay. It's a door that's open. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop the episode here, guys. And we're going to continue in the next episode. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this, think of this series so far. I think I'm getting a little bit better at the, the puzzles. There was one puzzle back in the last, or episode before last, that took me forever. But um, I'm getting used to them now. Once you click, you click. Once you get it, it's awesome. And I, I swear I haven't done these before. So this is all kind of just learning on the, on the run. So I'll see you guys in the next episode of The Turing Test. Ciao, ciao.